We now interrupt this Grain Tower project with some late-breaking news. Uh, okay, it's not really news. It's uh, some stuff I bought at TrainFest. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? I know you're all expecting the uh, part two of the Grain Tower um, elevator uh, project update, and I'm working on that. I really am. Uh, I've got a video in progress with uh, what I've what I've got done, uh, but it was Train Fest here in Milwaukee this weekend, uh, October or October. Jeez, I'm behind a month. Uh, November 9th and 10th. Is that? Yeah, November 9th and 10th. Uh, with uh, if you uh, you're a VIP, you can get it on Friday and you can uh, visit with the vendors. Uh, actually, a lot of the major vendors were there. Um, manufacturers. Uh, Athern was there, announced their new GP39s, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I don't know that they'll ever, well, they could apply for me, I guess. Uh, they would have been running during the era of Wisconsin Central since they were Southern units to begin with and then repainted for Norfolk Southern. Uh, so maybe someday I'll pick one of those up. Uh, and then there were a lot of other exciting announcements. I know uh, Exactrail had a new coil steel car that looks pretty cool. Um, and uh, I know there were a few other announcements that came out. I can't think of them off the top of my head. I got to check out some of that stuff while we were there. Uh, my son and I went and we spent uh, a good three hours there browsing and looking at the layouts. A lot of new layouts. There was a lot of, uh, there was a Maju track, I think that's the right term, uh, HO scale layout there that I've never seen before, which is really refreshing. Um, and uh, there are some, you know, the, the old standbys, there's some guys that have been coming to the lay, uh, to the train fest for many, many years. Um, and, uh, but a lot of good deals. And uh, so some of the deals, there's a, a guy, he goes by Tool Man. He sells all sorts of tools from uh, surgical scissors to X-Acto blades to files and chisels and drill bits and whatnot. Um, so I picked up a, uh, a miter box. I've been wanting to get one of these and a nice uh, saw to go with it. So that'll be great for making straight cuts on uh, stock items. And then, uh, oh yeah, and a uh, new steel rule. A uh, nice long one for cutting larger sheets of uh, styrene and, and wood and whatnot. I've been wanting to get one of these since a hammer fell in my other one and uh, dented the heck out of it. Um, long story. And then uh, I got some uh, replacement sanding pieces for the sanding stick. Uh, they were on, they had them, and I figured, oh, why not? And we'll grab those. And then a tube of Walther's goo and, you know, some, some stuff like that. But the more exciting part, and the part that this video is going to be about, is as you watch me try and set this thing up, is um, I want to go ahead and purchase. It's a Digitrax um, wireless throttle system. And uh, it's the uh, duplex equipped uh, UTP or U, what's the model number on this one? Um, the UR92. So this is the wireless receiver uh, that you have to put into your system. And then just a simple um, handheld remote. This is the, the more simple version since I have the more advanced version for programming and stuff like that. This one can't do programming or anything. So um, we'll. Uh, run through the setup and installation of this and, and that'll be the video for this week uh, and then I'll follow up um, continuation after all of this um, with uh, part two of the grain tower so um, let's go through the instructions and see how to get this thing set up okay so here's the directions for the duplex transceiver IR receiver so the UR92 and uh, We'll go through this whole thing, but uh, the interesting part is duplex range is approximately 300 feet diameter circle, so that should be plenty for my layout size. It's it's not that big. Um, and an overview of the panel and everything, all that good stuff, how to set it up, and it looks like it needs a uh, power supply, which is interesting, probably for the uh, the receiver itself, just to extend that range a little bit. So here's the panel. What's interesting is they don't put this into an anti-static bag, which leads me to believe that this stuff isn't real static sensitive. Most electronics are usually shipped in anti-static. Um, so you can see the, 
The difference here, if you compare this to a standard panel, um, I have a feeling that this is all antenna right in here. This whole circuit board is probably the antenna. For the price that you're paying, I'm going to go ahead and give them a break, but <laughs> using RTV is a little hodgepodgey. But uh, again, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt here. It's a decent price for wireless. So, And then a the, uh, phone cable, well, sort of. It's a six-wire phone cable, but it's essentially still a phone cable. And then uh, a power supply. Huh, I just realized I just did an unboxing. I always said I'd never do that. But uh, I just did. So, power supply for the, uh, the remote. And then the uh, wireless controller itself. So this is just, um, as you can see, there's no display on it. You select your, your local address by dialing in the um, control dials here and uh, they're not lit and they might be a little hard to see but you know it highlights the number that it's on and then you have to plug this in to a wired port this isn't uh, the duplex version uh, I do believe the newer duplex version um, you can select without having to plug it in and it'll take control of the locomotive that way um, however this one uh, to save money I went with a the non-duplex version so, and it does require um, two AA batteries in the back. Hopefully those last a while. If not, I'm going to have to pick up some rechargeables for it. So uh, let's flip over to my uh, Digitrax area where I have my um, deco or the uh, base station and everything, and we'll, we'll get this installed. Okay, um, I'm not going to lie, this is probably not one of my uh, pride and joys of the layout at all. <laughs> um, this unfortunately is, is one of the uglier parts of the uh, installation. And, uh, but basically what I've got here is this is the, the main decoder box or the main driving force, the DCS100. And for those of you with Digitrack systems, you know that this is the brains of the whole outfit. So you've got your uh, power coming in right here. Um, if you can see the leads there and then I, I wired the entire wire layout with uh, Romex and so it's solid wire and um, just for the record um, you know from a from a power perspective solid wire uh, can carry more voltage um, than braided wire and uh, while it's not as as uh, easy to work with it's a lot stiffer but that's why your house is wired with solid wire it, it has a higher current carrying capability um, so that's what I did, and at the time when I bought it, I got a, a really good deal on this roll. And so that's my main bus, and then uh, the black and white works out really well, so I know uh, which track goes to which. And then uh, off here, I've got uh, I had access to a lot of network cable, and in this case, phone jack cable. So I had um, used this, and this goes to my, uh, actually all the way to my workbench, and becomes my programming track here. And then, uh, so this hodgepodge of stuff here is almost like a old-fashioned switch panel of sorts. This is what I did before I found out that the LocoNet is a uh, bus, and I could have daisy-chained each um, of my panels to each other and not had to have done this. Instead, what I have here is a breakout panel, and uh, if I could take all this off, I've got wires coming out of here, out of the main LocoNets, um, on the main station goes into the back and it breaks them all out and then they all go out to individual panels like this and these are just standard I got these from um, Home Depot and this is a six pin uh, phone jack and that's essentially all Digitrax runs on their loco net is, is based off of a six pin device so what I'm probably going to do for now is I'll go ahead and uh, end up mounting this up here and I will bring this is just uh, to and from LocoNet to get it into the system so I'll just bring uh, a LocoNet into here and into here and uh, as far as I can tell from the instructions that's all I'm going to need to do. 
So let's find out. Since I'm not using the infrared portion of the um, the receiver, and I'm just going to be using the radio, uh, this doesn't necessarily need to be centrally located, um, like on the ceiling or um, up, you know, kind of up high or anything like that. Uh, while though the IR is nice, if you've got the uh, the duplex radio. Um, you, you really won't need the IR at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and stick it kind of pretty much in here um, since I'm just using the, the radio portion of it. And again, this is, is a little bit hack. I mean, it, this isn't the cleanest installation, definitely. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it gets the job done for now. Uh, eventually, I'm going to go ahead and build a shelf under here and, and really get this installed nice. I uh, just haven't gotten around to it. One of those projects that's got to get done, but uh, hasn't happened yet. So uh, I'm going to mark the holes, drill it, and then install the uh, the unit. So I just plug the AC power in here, or well, in this case, it's DC coming in now. Uh, line up the holes and install it. And there we go. Um, the nice thing is, is that. Uh, Digitrax mounts their receivers on a nice aluminum plate, which is great if you've got a fascia that you're going to be uh, mounting it to. It, it's a nice clean look. Um, in this case, it's nice because it it holds it pretty pretty rigid if you have to plug into here. Now, the, the good thing is the way that I'm going to be installing this, um, I won't need to make use of this. Um, because I've got jacks throughout the layout already for my wired receivers, or uh, throttles rather, um, I can plug in pretty much anywhere, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. Now I created a uh, short little pigtail here, and uh, well, this is going to be difficult to show now that I've done it this way. Um, but basically, I'm just going to take it, go into this side, come around on the back side, and it won't really show up, but uh, there's two jacks on the back. Plug that in, and then this is um, to my other receivers throughout, or the receptacles throughout. And there's two jacks on the back of the this receiver panel, and you just plug in um, one to each, and that's it. Okay, so now it's installed. According to the Digitrax uh, instructions, basically all I need to do is turn the track power on. Good. And on my main DT400, this is just an IR remote. This isn't the 402, so this isn't a wireless um, throttle, unfortunately. But you can see here it's identified my IR, the the radio um, channel that it's on, and you can adjust this so if you're going to a club or you've got multiple receivers, um, I'm going to leave it at zero since this is just uh, the only one I have and I, I don't travel at all. I'll leave it on on one, and I'll power on the unit. Can you hear the layout come to life? Um, and then the lights on the thing here. It's, I'm going to turn the light off here. So you can see, uh, I don't know if it'll show up, but the, the radio indicator shows that there is the radio is on and the uh, this net IR me being off means that it's connected into the um, local net uh, network. If this is red, for instance, if I unplug this, you can see that it comes on. So now you know that there's it's not currently part of the network. Plug it back in. It turns off. Now it's part of the local net network. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This UT4R does not talk to the UR92 panel that I bought and just installed. I found that out the hard way. This is a simplex radio, meaning it only does one-way communication and you can't grab a locomotive using just um, radio. You have to you have to plug in uh, this, this throttle into a local net jack 
in order for it to take control of an address. I didn't know that. I thought radio is radio. I emailed Digitrax, Digitrax got back to me right away and said, nope, you've got the wrong panels. So a little bit of egg on my face, not real thrilled about that, but I've made do. Um, I'm actually going to turn this into a tethered throttle and um, so that's why now you can see that there's a really long uh, cord on it. But the good news is the dispatching and grabbing of an address is the same uh, whether this is wired or wireless. So you can see here there's a series of dials. I don't know if the numbers will show up, but these dials go 0 to 9. And so you dial in the uh, loco uh, ID that you want. And so in this case I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy here and uh, he's got a short address of 52. So I've dialed in, it's uh, 0052, so you work from the right over to the left. So if it was a four digit, your two larger digits would be here, and then 52. So to take control of that address, I still have to take the cord And as soon as I plug it in, you'll see a green light come on. That indicates that this con throttle now has control of this particular locomotive ID. And to prove that, we'll go ahead and do this. For, here's your forward, neutral, and reverse. Okay, so this engine has sound, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got it muted. So I'll do shift to get... Uh, Shift gets you the functions that are on the right, and the buttons normally get you just the function on the left. So I'll do Shift, F8, she comes alive, turn off the bell. Okay, so as you can see, you've got a nice big control knob for throttle control, and it's uh, pretty smooth. Slowly bring it back down, reverse the throttle. Now I will say I think this has something to do with how I have my engines programmed. Um, I have these uh, set that if uh, they're inactive for a certain period of time or the system or the throttle itself purges the ID the engine goes silent so you can see it, it automatically shuts down instead of sitting and idling and I think that that's the nature of this controller I think that it because of its analog uh, nature of, of grabbing the ID the loco ID um, I think as soon as it throttles down it, it may actually do something different than your normal throttle and that's why the uh, locomotive automatically like just shuts off um, so I, I have to look into that a little bit more to, to see if that's the case or not. But overall it's uh, pretty handy. It's a nice size. Uh, perfect for, you know, you can't, like they say, you can't do any real special features if you've got powered turnouts with uh, switch machines on them. You can't control those. This is pretty much just for um, engine control or locomotive control. So now let's say I want to grab a different loco. I need to unplug it or in this case uh, change the ID. So then I'm going to go to one put this back to two this one to one and then uh, plug it back in and there you see it blink red real quick and then it goes right to green. Now I have control of a different locomotive so there we go. Well, that's the, uh, the late breaking uh, news from Train Fest. I did get one other thing. Uh, I got uh, these Walthers, uh, this Walther conveyor, uh, grain conveyor. It's just this uh, main piece here and then uh, it's got the piping to go. I, uh, I thought this would be a good addition to the grain project, the, the grain elevator project. Uh, I need something to show that uh, there's a way for the grain to get from the grain dryers that I have 
over to the main silos and everything. So I thought this would be a good addition, plus it includes the piping. And then uh, I purchased uh, the guy wire, the brass guy wire and uh, bracing already. So uh, I'm hoping that these will go together well. So the, uh, the, grain ex the grain tower is coming along. I hope to have an update on that soon. Hopefully that'll be the next uh, um, video we show. And again, it, uh, I'm not disappointed with my purchase in the Digitrack stuff. That was my, my mistake when I made it, when I made the purchase. Uh, I should have done a little bit more math, uh, but the, the price was good. And, uh, you know, you get caught up when you're at a train show and, hey, look at that deal. And I checked the price and it was good and bought it thinking radio is radio. Yeah, it really isn't. So. Uh, for now, I've got an extra throttle, which is what I wanted. It can give my son a, a throttle, and I can have a throttle, and we can both control things now. And then eventually, I'll I'll get an actual wireless one now that I've got the wired wireless receiver panel. So, well, thanks a lot. Uh, short update for uh, for this one. And again, hopefully, we'll have a, another grain ex grain tower uh, update soon. So, thanks a lot, everyone, and we will see you next time.